Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to create realistic fabric texture when you render in Clo 3D. First, let's bring out a fabric from the library. Click the fabric from the object browser then go to property editor. Under basic parameters. You can see texture, normal map, and displacement map. Texture is the pattern of how this fabric was woven or knitted. However you are probably not familiar with normal map and displacement map. Normal map allows you to add surface detail to the fabric which catch the light as if they are represented by real geometry. It creates the illusion of depth detail on the surface. Displacement map allows a texture input to manipulate the position of vertices on rendered geometry. To make it simple and easier to understand, just remember. Normal map gives fabric fake depth. And displacement map gives the fabric actual depth. All the Clo 3D preset fabrics, they come with texture and normal map. If you zoom in closer, you will see the texture pattern. It shows even better in the render window. So when do you need to use displacement map? Let me give you an example. Here is a sweater I have created and I would like to make it in a cable knit material. Unfortunately, there's no cable knit fabric in the Clo 3D preset fabric folder. So, I found this cable knit picture online. And I used Photoshop to crop the picture and make it into a seamless repeat swatch. You can even crop the picture with your phone then upload to your computer. Of course the better resolution picture you use, the better result you get. Sometimes you will be able to find a seamless fabric swatch online, however. Most of the free online pictures, you have to adjust it yourself. By the way, when I created this sweater pattern, I used a preset fabric that is closer to the sweater knit fabric. In this case, I chose cotton terry cloth which has similar weight and stretch. Select the fabric in object browser, then go to property editor. Under material, basic parameters. Click on the four squares icon to upload the picture file I cropped. The texture has now been brought to the garments in both 3D and 2D window. However, it looks pretty flat. The next step, we need to make normal map and displacement map. Here is a free website called Normal Map Online. It will generate normal and displacement maps automatically for you and allow you to download them for free. I will attach the link in the description. When you go to the website, first you can click to upload or just drag the texture picture to the first square. And it will quickly create normal map and displacement map. Select normal map, it will show 2D view in the middle square and 3D view in the third square. You can adjust strength, level, blur and sharp on top of the window. Usually I will increase all three slightly for normal map. Click displacement. In the top window, you can adjust contrast, blur, and sharp. When you increase the contrast, blur and sharp, the height of the texture will increase as well. You will see the changes in the 3D preview window. You have the option to select 3D view in cube, sphere or cylinder as you prefer. Play with the setting to see what works better with your design. Once you are done with all the adjustments, Click Normal Map and go to Bottom Window and choose Download. I prefer to download in JPEG file. Repeat the same to download Displacement Map. And now we can upload to Clo 3D. Go to Property Editor, click the four square icon from Normal Map to import the Normal Map file. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison view on 3D and Render window. After adding normal map, it gives the light shading to create an illusion of three dimension. But the silhouette outline still looks pretty clean straight. Let's add the displacement map now. If you look at the 3D window, nothing changes. That's because displacement map only shows in rendering. Let me refresh the render window, and again nothing seems to change. Go back to Property Editor, under Displacement Map. Go to Amount, and enter a number. Let me try 5 and refresh the render window. 
And there, you can see the small bumps on the sweater outline compared to the clean sharp line in 3D window. Just to show you the difference, let me increase the amount to 25. You can see the bumps became more obvious. That's because displacement will add the height to the fabric texture. For this sweater, I think 8 is the better amount for displacement map. To complete this look, let me use the same method to create normal and displacement maps and add rib cuffs and neckband to this sweater. Here is the final render with realistic cable knit texture. One thing I like to mention is. When you import a texture to your garment. If you like to adjust the size of the texture by using edit texture tool. Make sure you do it after you bring in both normal and displacement maps. Or all three maps position might not line up correctly on the garment, and you will not get a good result. This is another cable knit sweater design I have done with normal and displacement maps. It's pretty simple and you can get a very realistic looking fabric rendering. The next example I am going to show you is how you can layer your graphic on top of the fabric texture. With the cable knit sweater, I brought in new texture to replace Clove 3D preset fabric texture. But what if you want to keep that preset texture and just add your own design? Here is how you can do it. First, let me bring out Clove 3D Preset Denim Lightweight Fabric as the base texture. As you can see, it has the denim texture with normal map. Denim fabric is not like the cable knit sweater that needs to have the height. So you can either just use only the normal map. Or you can click on the texture, make a duplicate. Bring this duplicate to the normal map online website to generate a displacement map. Then bring it back to Clove 3D and add your preferred amount to it. I have made this smiley face design in Adobe Illustrator and exported it as PNG file with transparent background. Click on the denim fabric in Object Browser, then go to Property Editor. Under Material, Basic Parameters, Texture. Click the third icon which is the Texture Editor. This will bring out a new window. In Texture Editor, you will see three parts. Top part of the window is the Your Texture Canvas. Right now it's showing my base fabric which is the lightweight denim. The yellow grid divided your canvas into even squares. Each square represents a repeat pattern tile. You can scroll your mouse to zoom in and zoom out to view your design. On top of the window, you can adjust the setting of your canvas size. I prefer using inch and I am going to change the size to a 6 by 6 inch square which will match the graphic size I created. As you can see once I change the size, my base fabric has these transparent areas. I can use the texture edit wheel in the canvas window to adjust the size of my base fabric. Or you can go to the bottom right window. Under repeat, turn on tile and it will fix the issue. As for the PPI, pixel per inch. Keep it at 300, so you will have a good resolution for render. Now I can upload my design. Go to texture layer window and click add, or just drag your file in here. You can move the graphic by using your mouse left click and drag it. The texture edit wheel allows you to change size and rotate the design. If you click the tile and repeat, it will fill up the square with your graphic. By the way, in the texture layer window, the order of the list indicate the order of the texture layers on your fabric. Right now I have the smiley face on top of the list, that means the smiley face graphic is the very top layer on the fabric. 
When you select a layer, it will height light in blue. You can add as many layers of graphic and texture here. However, you can only edit one layer at the time. Right now I have a single smiley face in the tile to create a uniform repeat pattern. If you want to make a seamless repeat, this is how you can do. First, select the smiley face layer and make a copy. Select the new copy layer and move it to one of the square corner. As you can see part of the graphic was cut out. In lower right side of the window, under repeat, click extend to other side. You will get the seamless repeat pattern. Click the icon that look like an eye in texture layer window will hide the layer. If I switch the order the layers and move base fabric to top of the graphic. Now you can't see the smiley face graphic because it's under the base fabric layer. If I change the opacity of the base fabric, and the smiley face will appear again. In the bottom right window, you can change the blend mode and color of your graphics and texture. I like to lower the opacity of the graphic to around 70, so the base fabric texture can show through the graphic a little bit. Once you are done edit your texture, click apply, and Clo will update your changes in object browser. On the left bottom corner, you can click save image to save your design as PNG file. Click apply and close to exit the window. Select the fabric and go to property editor. You can save this fabric file and use it for your future project. So this is how you can create designs on top of your base fabric and not loosing the texture. Let me render this fabric with and without displacement map to give you a comparison. It's not a huge difference because it's denim and doesn't need to have much height in texture like the cable knit. You can decide what works for you. This is another denim outfit I made with normal and displacement map. I used the denim texture fabric I found online for this dress instead of using the preset denim fabric from Clo 3 d Same thing on the straw hat. I hope after watching this video, you will be able to create realistic fabric and improve your render quality. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to click like and subscribe.